Hello, everyone. My name is Mukesh, and I'm a senior research associate at the University of Cambridge. In this video and few upcoming videos, we will explore functional programming using Cock Theorem Prover. If you know functional programming, that's great. If you don't know, no worries. We'll start from very basic and then build step-by-step -step understanding. So no prerequisite to know anything, just willing to learn. Now, if you want to learn Cock, we need to first install it. So let me share my screen with you. So the best way to install Cock is going to this website, how to install Open. So first you install Open, and then once you have Open installed, then you go to your command prompt and type Open install Cock. In my case, it's already installed. So it says that it's already installed. Okay, so that's the cock installation. We need editor to go through to write cock programs. And I am using VS Code, which is very popular nowadays, except for VS Code, I am using proof general key bindings. So you, if you're coming from Emacs background, you can use this, but the thing you really need is VS Cock. So this is the plugin you need. And if you have used uh, Emacs, then you would like to install proof journal key bindings. So now that we have installed Cock and editor and its plugins, Time to get started. And we'll start very simple thing, very simple. We'll start with Boolean logic, okay? So we know that in Boolean logic, we have two values, true and, and false. So how can we express this in COG? How can we tell COG that I intend to model Boolean logic. So the keyword is inductive, and then I'm going to name it bool, and I'm going to give it two constructor, true and false, and put a dot here. And now I'm going to hold my control key, first press C, and then press N. And you see that buffer is green. Cock has accepted this definition. If you are um, coming from Haskell background, I believe it's data, and then you name that thing, but other than that, it's nothing fancy. For the moment, we are just declaring a data type. So in order to declare a data type, first we need to write this keyword inductive, then give it a name, and then this colon equal to, to say that I'm going to give definition, and then I have two constructors here true and false. So, so far so good. We have data type. So what can we do with this data type? Well, we can write functions to manipulate them. So what is the simplest function in Boolean logic? The one I can think is negation function. So, 
Let's see how do we write a negation function. So the key word is definition. And then we give the name to this function. So I'm going to give this NEGB and the parameters it takes. In this case, it takes just one parameter and I named it B and the return type is food. Okay, so far I'm telling Cock that I'm going to define a definition and the name of that definition is NEGB. It takes a parameter, a Boolean, Boolean value, and it returns a Boolean value. And now I'm going to do pattern match. So the keyword is match and the parameter you want to match. So in this case, it's B and all the constructors. So a Boolean has a Boolean value has two constructors. If it's true, then I'm going to return false. If it's false, then I'm going to return true. And then I write end to tell to the end says that this pattern matching has finished. Put a dot and then control C, control N. And you see that the buffer is green means the type checker is happy. Now, what would happen if I say, forget this, this thing? Ah, now it's saying that the type checker is complaining that non-exhaustive pattern matching, no clause found for pattern false. So this is first learning. When we are doing pattern matching in Cock, we need to give all the constructors. And so I'm going to put that back. And now our negation function or not function is defined. So far, we have just done a functional programming. You know, we have defined our data type. We have defined a function. Now, what else can we do with this? Well, let's see. We can test our function that, how does it behave? So the thing I'm going to write eval, compute in and e i'm going to evaluate our function on true and here you can say that it returns false and if i write here false you can say that it returns true even if i apply any gb to any gb on true we expect it to return true. Because if we apply negation function twice, we should get this. So we can evaluate our function, but Cock is a theorem prover, which means that we can prove properties about our function. In this case, NAGB. So let's see the simplest true statement I can think about negation function. This NEGB function is that if I take any Boolean value B and apply negation function twice to it, then it will remain the same. So what I mean to say is NEGB N-E-G-B, B is equal to B. 
and I intend to prove this in comp. So let's do that. We start a proof by writing theorem, then name of the theorem. In this case, I'm going to write NEGB underscore NEGB, and then put a column and then I write for all B of type bool, N E G B, N E G B of B is equal to B. And now you see here in buffer that it says that it's exactly just copy pasted our definition. So I start or we start this proof by writing this keyword called proof. And now I'm going to do intros B. What it means is I'm assuming an arbitrary B no particular B, just assume arbitrary Boolean value. And then it puts, it moves at the top of line. It means now we, we assumed it. So we have assumed that there is arbitrary Boolean value. And we want to prove this statement now. So see from for all, then we assumed arbitrary B. And now we just want to prove this statement. So how can we prove that? Well, B had just two constructors. You remember true and false. So, if B is true, then NEGB true is false and false goes to NEGB again and we get true. So both side returns true. If B is false, then this equation again false. So how can we tell cock that B has two constructors, the one we define here? we can do case analysis on a Boolean value B. So I'm going to do case analysis by destructing B. And the tactic here is, or the thing you want to do is, so these are tactics, not very important for this video, but maybe in once we build some understanding, we'll explain what these tactics are doing under the hood. So I'm going to destruct. I'm going to do case analysis on B. So let's do destruct B. And now, remember here, we have just one goal, just one statement to prove. But when I do destruct B, now I have two statements to prove. This one, and this one. So how can I prove the first one? Let's focus on the first thing. I want to prove that negation of negation of true is equal to true. Well, let's see. If B is true, then we return false. So this whole thing is equal to false. And then if it's false, then we return true. So this whole thing equal to true. So the tactic for this is SIMPL. It means simplification. So let's simplify this. 
And you see that the left-hand side, that whole complicated expression reduces to just true. And this is trivial, so we can prove that the tactic for this is reflexivity. And now the cock has displayed the masses that they are unfocused goals. So let's go to the next unfocused goal. And the recipe is same. So I'm going to do SIMPL and then reflexivity. And now I have this thing, no more sub goals. So I close this proof this by another keyword called QED. And we are done, we finished. So this is our first theorem that we have proved. In fact, if you want to prove a more general version of this, um, you can say that NEGB applied to Boolean, Boolean value even number of times returns the same Boolean value. So now that we have proven our first theorem, first true statement, what would happen if by chance, by mistake, you try to prove something which is not true, i.e. false? For example, say you think a theorem I can't, um, I believe it's true. And what this theorem is, you say that for all B of type bool, so for every Boolean value, and remember, Boolean has two constructors. NEGB of B is equal to B. Well, this is simple. So we can say that, oh, it's, it's not true. But say you have a complicated expression and you think that it's true. And you try to prove that thing. So let's see what would happen if we try to prove this. So the recipe is same. Um, now we are going into proof mode. So I assume an arbitrary B. And I do a case analysis on B. Ah, you see, the left-hand side is false and the right-hand side is true. And you cannot prove this. This should not be provable. So anything that is false should not be provable. So that's the, the second learning that only true statements should be provable, not false. Okay, so let's get rid of this. So let's recap this. If you want to prove something, prove a property of your function, then you state a keyword, start with a keyword, then you give it a name, and then you express your statement. So here for all B of type bool, so here every Boolean value and Boolean had just two constructors. So when I'm saying every Boolean value, I'm talking about the constructors. And Boolean has two constructors. So it holds for true and false. And then we express our statement. Then we start proof. 
put a dot and then intro B and I hold control C, control N, control C, control N, control C, control N. And QET. Okay. Right. Another theorem I can prove is NEGB tries for all B of type rule. If I apply NEGB odd number of times to a Boolean value, then it should be equal to N B. Okay. So you convince yourself that this statement is true. Coming up with these statements is sort of practice. So you write your data type, you write your function, and then think, hmm, what property it holds? And once you know that property it holds, then you express it as a theorem. And then, hmm, how would I prove this? And once you have developed enough expertise, and you know enough tactics, then it's basically just a matter of simple moving mechanical, mechanically. No, it's, it's a mechanical process. So the difficult part is figuring out how would we do the proof. Once we have figured it out, then translating in COC is not dif difficult. If you know the tactics and the syntax. So let's start again. I'm going to say, I'm going to do this proof and I'm going to assume an arbitrary B. I'm going to do a case analysis on B. So we have two cases. So one more thing I, so this plus is if, so this plus, or, or a marker, I'll say. You see here, I have two goals and I just want to, for the moment, focus on this one. I don't want to focus on this thing. So when I do plus, then you see that the second sub goal is no longer visible on the screen and it's just the first sub goal. So it's sort of nice that there is, no noise on the screen. Okay, so the template is so far same. I do a simplification and I do reflexivity. I do simplification and I do reflexivity and then I do QED. So up to this point, I have defined an inductive data type, a function to manipulate that data type. How can we evaluate our function on some value? And what property our function holds? For example, if I take any Boolean value and apply negation function twice, I'll get the same value B. And this is simple, but if you think carefully, we can write this as an optimization. Rather than taking a Boolean value and passing it through two functions, we know that we'll get the same value. So we can replace this expression by this expression. Yeah, and meaning is not going to change at all. Okay. 
okay? And similarly, in this case, if I have a complicated expression where you're applying odd number of negation, uh, NEGB to a Boolean value, then I can just remove all and replace them by just one expression, this NEGB. So, and we know that it's true because we have proved in a theorem proven. So, what is our next function? Let's go to define some more function, definition and B, B1, it takes two parameters, B1 and B2 of type bool. It returns a bool. And now I'm going to define this function match b1 and comma b2 it's it's a tuple now I'm, I'm doing pattern matching at b1 and b2 at the same time with so this is like this but i am leaving those brackets and now how many values B1 and B2 can have? So B1 can be true, B2 can be true. In that case, I will return true. B1 can be false, B2 can still be true. And in this case, it's false. Now, B1 can be true and B2 can be false, then I return false. And if both are false, then I also return false. And then I write end. And the type checker is happy. Now, what would happen if I say forget one case? Hmm. Now, Cock is rightly telling us that you have forgotten false and false case. If you remove this one, false and true case, that will say false and true case. So one good thing about theorem provers is that they really help you in writing correct program. They you can think of like they are that your assistant and the name is proof assistant because they are assisting you. It's you who are at the driving seat and taking control. These people, uh, this theorem prover is assisting you. Hence the name proof assistant. Okay, so let's get back to our case. Now, we can do a bit of optimization here. We don't need to type all the syntax. So we see that in true and true case, we are returning true value. In every other case, we are just returning false. So what we can do here is we can write underscore, underscore, false returns false. What it means is we're telling cock that if the first value is true and the second value is true, then return true. And rest of the cases, rest of the three cases, return false. In this case, the three cases. And type checker is happy. It accepts the definition. And it has the same meaning that we had in the in the previous definition where we are doing case analysis on every value and we had four cases. Okay, what else can we? Let's define another function. Definition So before we define another function, 
let's think about some properties that we can prove about this. Okay. So one property at the top of my head is theorem and be true both are true. So our function, the and, returns true when both arguments are true. Other than that, it returns false. So let's prove that for all B1, B2 of Thai bool and B, B1 and B2. Ah, okay. So B1 is true and B2 is true. This implies B1 and B2 is true. Okay. Now what I'm saying here is that if you give me for any two arbitrary for all, okay, for all is means it's true for every Boolean. So for all B1, B2 of type bool, if B1 is true, B2 is true, then this whole expression is going to be true. Well, we, we know that from our definition here. See that when B1 is true and B2 is true, then and B1, B2 is true. So let's prove this thing and see if we can establish this. Since it's obviously true, but let's see if we can make it more precise. So I'm going to intro B1, B2. So this is B1, B2. And now I'm going to name this one as HB1 and HB2. HB1, HB2, okay? So now we have two Boolean values and a hypothesis. What is that hypothesis or assumption? That B1 is true and B2 is true. And in that case, this whole expression is true. So how can we prove that? So there are a few ways. So let's do our very simple case analysis, okay? So I'm going to do destruct B1 and then destruct B2. And now you can see that we have, at this point, we have three cases. So let's prove one or C. Okay. So the template is same. Um, reflexivity. Oh. If you remember, previously I said, this can't be proved. And now we have to prove this. But if you look carefully, this is fine, but this assumption is not fine. This is a false. So if we have false in our assumption, we can prove anything. Definitely false is not equal to true, but somehow this came to our assumption. This is an, our assumption. It's a false statement. Okay. So the tactic here is we write inversion 
And then I'm going to give HP2 and it's gone. So if you have a false statement in your assumption, assumptions means above this line, then you just apply inversion and then it's gone. So let's go for another one. I'm going to again do the same thing, destruct B2. Okay, I need to go through another point. Okay, so if I do plus here, I'll say it's wrong bullet. So I did a bit of mess up, uh, but I'll redo this proof without these bullets so you can understand what's going on here. So let's do simplification and here. See that? That's our target. We just do an inversion. And I do simplification and then again inversion just in, on any one, HP1. And there is no more proof for QED. Okay. So let's do this proof by another tactic in a, in a more nicer way. Okay. So we want to prove this. If somehow you see that B1 is equal to true. If I can take that B1, this true thing and replace here because B1 is equal to true. So if I take that HB1 and replace the B1 equal to true. So the B1 here, I want to replace it by true. And similarly for B2, I want to replace by true. Then you can see that this expression, just a mere simplification and B, true, true, equal to true. So the tactic is I do rewrite HB1. Now, what does this mean? This means that I am going to rewrite HB1 in the goal. So what is HB1? HB1 is this. Uh, this tactic is going to look the left-hand side of this thing, this equation is going to search in the goal and replace it by true. So once I execute this, the B1 should be replaced by true. Yeah, see that? I go back and I replace HB1. Similarly, I can do write, I can write HB2 and I do SIMPL and reflexivity and QED. So for this one, we can prove it in two different ways, by case analysis or by rewriting. So you see that there are, in this case, there are two ways to prove that. Now, if I flip the argument, other hand, you know, that and B1, B2 is true, then B1 should be true and B2 should be true. So let's write that. Theorem and B true, other side. I'm going to name this other side. What I'm going to say now is for all B1, B2 of type, bool if and b b1 oh sorry b1 b2 is true 
then it means b1 is true and so this is cock and okay and b2 is true so if our boolean and the one we defined here returns true, then there is only one case that's possible. And that one case is this case. B1 is true and B2 is true. Okay, so let's go and prove this. So I'm going to do intros B1, B2, HB1, HB, uh, I think we have just one assumption, right? HB1. So I'm going to name it HB. Hmm. Now we need to do case analysis. So destruct B1 and destruct b2 okay and now i want to so you see that this goal is trivial okay so it's and so the tactic is split what a split does is if you have two ands in your goal, then it breaks them, you know, it splits them into two goals and then you prove them separately. So after this one, we'll have five or four. Yeah, four sub goals, right? And then it's reflexivity, reflexivity. Okay, okay, we can split this goal as well and apply reflexivity. But now you see that we have this goal, which we can't prove. But this is an indication that now it's time we should look in the, we look at the top of line, we look in our assumptions. So let's do that. I am going to simplify HP. So I am going to do SIMPL in HB. So now I'm going to simplify the expression that is represented by HP. Ah, oh, okay. So there are two things here you can do. You can do inversion HB. That also solves this. Or there is another tactic called exact HB, because you see that this thing is the same as this thing. It also solves, or you can say that it's already in assumption and that also solves. So it depends how you solve. There are three ways to discharge that goal. So I am going our own, the thing we learn here in version B. Okay, and similarly, we, I do case analysis on a B2 here to see what it is. Is it a true? It is a false. So let's destruct B2. And I do, uh, sorry, there is no simplification here. So let's do, first split our, this code. So let's, let's break it into two. And you see that we have some impossible thing. So now rather than splitting, I want to discharge it in one go. So let's do SIMPL in HP. And this is false equal to true. 
and we know that the tactic is HB. And similarly for this one as well, I don't want to do split. I don't want to split the goal because I know that this thing is false, false equal to true. So I can do inversion HB. And then I finish the proof. So today, we have, we did a very basic functional programming. What is basic means we define our own Boolean data type, our own model of a Boolean logic. That we define two functions negation and and, and we proved properties about them. So what is Cock theorem prover? At this point, you can see that you can define, you can give your definitions, you can write functions, but more importantly, you can prove the properties about your functions. And which is the most crucial point because softwares often have bugs. So when you write a software, you want to establish that it's correct. And that's where these theorem provers come. So we'll continue this lecture next week. And next week I'll come with more Boolean functions, more proofs and and then we'll, we'll move on to other data types, for example, natural numbers, integers. If you are interested to know more, you can look at the Cock Boolean logic library. And okay. So this is, yes, this is the, yeah. So you can look at this one, but we'll, we'll explore, we'll go slow and we'll explore more. So thank you very much for your time.